What's up YouTube? I'm James Bodie, and you're watching Relative Motion. This is a channel all about teaching you the best means from point A to point B. And this is going to be the final overview episode here on Season 1, where we're talking about the best piston-powered helicopters in the world. And on this last episode, we're going to talk about the Robinson R44, which really is a great all-around machine, and is what I would consider the Toyota Corolla of helicopters. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Because if you were going to pick one helicopter, whether it was piston or turbine, for personal use, this might be the best overall one. And in this video, I'm going to show you why this helicopter is so popular just for that. Now the reason I consider the Robinson R44 the Toyota Corolla of helicopters is because if I was going to just recommend one helicopter to anybody, this is probably the one I would normally point to. So let's see why. Just to start, this helicopter of any helicopter ever made has the most units ever produced. And it's actually well into the 6,000s now. Which of course doesn't sound like a lot, but in the world of aviation, that's a tremendous run and especially in the world of helicopters. Which means, of course, which you hear me harp on a lot on this channel, that this is going to be a really reliable helicopter. From the fact this helicopter has so many flight hours on it, it's pretty ridiculous. So any mechanical issues with the helicopter have been well worked out by now. And of course I also think it adds to the safety from the fact most places that work on helicopters will work on these. And then on top of it, because it is so common, usually the people working on them have worked on them a fair amount which again leads to safety because they know a little bit more of what they're doing another reason i would consider this the corolla of helicopters is especially for a piston powered helicopter it has a decent weight and in the world of helicopters it is a smaller helicopter but it is the only helicopter in this list with that second row of seats which certainly adds more versatility to this helicopter for obvious reasons and what adds even more to the versatility of this helicopter with that back seat is all the doors can come off and again because of the look of this helicopter I don't think it really hurts the aesthetics too much to have the doors off and again depending on your view you might even think it's cool like driving around in a Jeep with the doors off so the Robinson helicopters that I think it's worth talking about the different models they've produced over the years and real quickly I'll just start off with the R22 which we talked about in a previous episode but I unfortunately forgot to mention the models for that one that one quickly only has two different ones that I would be looking for. That is either the Beta model or the Mariner. Now the Mariner, like a similar version in the R44, is a version of a helicopter that's gonna be more based around water and is actually equipped with emergency deployable floats. So if you do lose your engine over water, you can still land safely. So going to the R44, there's definitely a few more options to choose from. So you have the Raven, which is kind of the original one, similar to the Beta on the 22. Then you have the Clipper, which again is the marine version of this helicopter made to be operated around water and is comparable to the Mariner on the R-22. This one also comes equipped with emergency floats and both of these actually advertise that the Clipper and the Mariner come with extra corrosion protection. Although I have to be honest I'm not sure how much I buy this since generally in aviation most equipment is very corrosion resistant already so I'm not quite sure what the difference is they do here but I've been wrong before. Anyways, with these marine model helicopters, if you're able to do it, I would generally speaking sometimes recommend just going for rigid floats versus the emergency floats. And all that simply means is these floats are always deployed, which have some advantages and disadvantages, which I won't totally get into here. But if you are landing this helicopter repeatedly on water, those can be a much better option. Just be aware in general though, helicopters aren't made to be landed in water. Hence why most of them only have emergency floats. This is due to the fact that a lot of helicopters are very top heavy because a lot of weight is concentrated around the rotor. Which is obviously not advantageous if you're in water which makes it very easy to tip over. So generally speaking in a helicopter you want to avoid shutting your engine down once you've landed in water 
because the engine running actually helps keep you upright because of the thrust the rotor is producing upward. However, I will say these Robinsons can lend themselves well to handling the water just for the fact they have piston engines which generally speaking are heavier, and on top of it, these engines are generally located down lower. So it actually lowers the center of gravity, generally speaking, in these Robinson helicopters. However, because they insist on having these tall rotor masts on these Robinsons, that does also make this slightly more top heavy. So even the Robinson isn't perfect. So anyways, if you are actually planning on landing directly in water, look into these rigid floats. And they're actually available for most of these helicopters on this list. The last two versions of the R44 that are available is one they've released fairly recently called the Cadet. This one's a little interesting because they actually take out the back row of seats which gives it a little more area for cargo. However, I'd say this difference isn't a whole lot, but if you know you're never gonna have passengers in the back of this helicopter, and the only reason you are buying it is to use that back seat as cargo, this is definitely a model I'd look into. And then the last version, which I think in particular is pretty cool, is they actually offer a police model of this helicopter, which, as far as I know, a civilian could purchase, but obviously they're not going to paint police on the side of it for you. The reason the police version is cool is it comes with two accessories that are really common on larger helicopters. And this is definitely the smallest helicopter you can find either of these features on. The first is a giant searchlight. This is a 500 watt focusable beam that has about 15 to 20 million candle power. So this is an extremely bright light, although relatively speaking, to searchlights on helicopters, this is definitely not the biggest one but is an awesome feature nonetheless. And then maybe the cooler feature that this thing comes with is a fully controllable articulating camera that actually even has thermal imaging. Yep, that's right, the same kind that Predator in the movie had. Besides the infrared, some stats on this camera is the model of the actual camera is the HDL-53000. And this is a 2.6 megapixel camera that will shoot 1080 which for what you pay for this camera, you might be surprised it's not more than that. However, the reason it has less image quality is this thing actually has a tremendous zoom. When it's in the infrared mode, it has a 10x zoom. And when it's in its just normal mode, it has an 18x zoom. So this camera is definitely more about zoom than HD quality because you're not gonna be able to shoot 4K with it. However, I'm here to tell you that's what you want in a helicopter because generally speaking, you're gonna be far away from whatever you're looking at. And then last, this camera is equipped with a Canon lens, which to me is definitely a good thing. They make the best camera lenses, I think. And more specifically, if you want to know, this Canon lens is 7.6 to 168 millimeters. Like I said, though, I'm not entirely sure they sell this model to civilians, but I would think they would, considering it doesn't have a machine gun strapped to it or anything. Just don't let it go to your head flying around in this thing thinking you're Magnum PI or something, because you're definitely not. So some of the things that make this helicopter really legit is just for starters, unlike the last two helicopters we talked about, this helicopter does come equipped with a governor. And then the feature this thing has that actually no other helicopter on this list has is it has hydraulically assisted flight controls, which you're going to find on this helicopter and probably any helicopter larger than this. And that's simply for the fact, once helicopters get any larger, the flight controls become too hard to manage without the assistance of hydraulic power. However, it's definitely worth noting, this helicopter can be flown without hydraulics fairly easily, especially compared to some of the larger helicopters. So this hydraulics is more of a luxury feature on this helicopter, but regardless, it's definitely welcome because it makes the controls a lot easier to handle. Another feature unique to this helicopter on this list is it's the only one actually with a six cylinder engine on it. All the helicopters previously either had four cylinders or less. This really is only due to the fact this is the largest helicopter on the list, so it needs more power. However, the other bonus effect of this is it also helps make this the fastest helicopter on this list, and I'd say by a decent amount, compared to where the others fall. However, don't get carried away with yourself, because in the world of helicopters, this helicopter still is extremely slow. Like, for example, happened to this police version of a Robinson R44, where the Robinson R44 gets outrun by a Dodge Challenger Hellcat. So who said you can't outrun the police anymore? However, there are rumors that Robinson is working on putting a diesel engine in the Robinson R44. Personally, I think that's exciting news, and I'm interested to see if they're able to make that happen. My wager would be that diesel engine is going to run on jet fuel. 
because most other diesel engines in aviation do, even though they still are quite rare. But I think that would help hugely on the efficiency of this helicopter, which if you're owning a Robinson, is probably going to be a little more important to you. So just like this helicopter's younger brother, the Robinson R-22 shares a fair amount of similarities between it. The first I would say, unfortunately, is I don't think either of these helicopters are necessarily the best looking one. However, I definitely will say I think the R-44 looks better than the 22. And that's largely because the engine's actually enclosed on the back. And I just think that leads to a much cleaner look. These both share having a really tall rotor mast. And without a doubt, it's even more exaggerated on the R44. And I think it's the biggest hurt to the aesthetics of this helicopter. But I'm gonna imagine they did this for some sort of design reason, to make the helicopter more stable or something. So it kind of has to be like this is what I'm guessing. But I guess honestly I don't know, and I'm just trying to justify the way this thing looks. Another feature shared between these helicopters is they both have that T-bar cyclic, which I'm not going to explain again in this video, but if you're interested to know more about that cyclic, make sure you check out the Robinson R22 video where I go into more detail. And then the last feature shared between these helicopters is the tiny bit of storage they have available if these helicopters are actually filled to max capacity of people. And this is because they actually have no specific cargo compartment and the only actual dedicated cargo area like this is the small amount under each seat. However, I suppose because there's four more seats in this helicopter, you do have a little more room but you do also have twice the people. So I'm not sure that math works out in the end. I'm just gonna go out and say, this is not a helicopter you wanna be flying four people around in all the time. And this is for several reasons. One is, I don't think the weight all works out very well if you have full fuel and four passengers. You're gonna be very close to max load, especially if you're trying to take anything with you. However, it can be done. But another reason I don't like carrying four people in this machine is be aware the back seats are pretty tight. And this helicopter is just tight in general because it is fairly narrow, and especially in the back seats, just to give you an idea how narrow it is, to give you a little extra room, the windows actually bow out and contain an armrest in them. However, I'm not gonna overstate the value of having this second row of seats, especially in this class of helicopter, because obviously it's the only one with it. And if I'm being totally objective, like most of these helicopters, I'd really only be carrying a couple people around. And if that is the case, you have a giant back seat available for cargo. And then if you need it, you have the option to fly up to four people around. So this helicopter is extremely versatile, I think. Which leads again to why I consider this the Corolla of helicopters. Or I'd suppose I'd even make the comparison, if you're already into aviation, of this is the Cessna 172 of helicopters. And again, I don't say that as a negative. I say that from a positive, especially from a safety fact. This helicopter's widespread use also has the advantage. There's tons of STCs available if you're into that kind of thing. And what a STC simply means in aviation is it's some sort of modification you do to the aircraft. But because it's aviation, it's just highly regulated when you modify an aircraft. So generally speaking, this has a lot more options available for it aftermarket. Like for example, if you want to get an autopilot, which is a pretty high-end feature in helicopters. And you wouldn't even generally see until you got into the more expensive twin-engine ones. So seeing features like that in this small of a helicopter is definitely pretty amazing. I do want to mention just quick, even though I think I might do a video on it someday, I just left it out of this list because of its rarity, is the helicopter called the Hummingbird. This is the only other six-cylinder helicopter that I know of that exists, which also means it's one of the rare, large, piston-powered helicopters that actually has two rows of seats. This one is just particularly interesting to me because it actually has a three-bladed rotor system instead of the two, like the Robinson, and it's supposedly a high inertia system too. And oddly enough, this helicopter sits on four wheels instead of having a pair of skids. So if there's enough interest, hopefully I'll do a video on this helicopter someday. Because it certainly is interesting, even though it is very rare. And then the last thing I want to speak on, which I feel like I always have to speak on when I talk about Robinsons, is the bad reputation these helicopters have sometimes gotten in aviation, unfortunately. But I'm here to tell you, I truly believe that's because, as I've talked about in this video, this helicopter is the most used helicopter in the world. And, because it's piston-powered, it's also one of the more affordable helicopters, which is generally speaking why you go for a piston helicopter anyways. Piston helicopters, generally speaking, use less fuel and have lower maintenance costs. But the biggest downside to them is their lower performance, especially when compared to a turbine helicopter. So because of the fact 
This is a piston helicopter and it's so widely used and purchased. I think unfortunately it falls into a lot of novices hands that don't take aviation as serious as you should. And because of that, this helicopter ends up in a lot of accidents and incidents. And then people like to blame it on the helicopter and aviation. But like I said, I'm here to tell you, most of the crashes that involve Robinson have to do with the pilot, not the ship itself. And I truly think these people would have crashed any helicopter they would have been in. So in spite of all this, I truly believe this is one of the safest helicopters. And that widely revolves around, again, the widespread use this helicopter has had, which has racked up so many flight hours on this machine that so many of the kinks have been worked out, and this machine is extremely safe, if it is well maintained. And on my 14th Robinson Safety Lecture, I'm going to end this episode. Well, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this season on the best piston-powered helicopters in the world today. I will say I'm not completely finished with this season because I'd like to do a conclusion video where I do a more side-by-side -side comparison between all these helicopters. So if you'd like more information on these helicopters, look out in the future for that video. And thank you so much for watching the first season here on Relative Motion. Check out the next season going on right now where we're looking at, for all intents and purposes, the smallest camper trailers in the world. And if you'd like to see other seasons about different vehicles from underwater to outer space, I hope you'd consider subscribing, where I'm going to continue to teach you the best means from point A to point B. And until I see you next time, I'm James Bodie, and you've been watching Relative Motion. Mr.